This is me. I'm about three years old and I'm playing Super Mario Brothers for the first time. I'm playing a video game for the first time and I'm completely enraptured. I remember playing Super Mario Brothers and feeling so creatively emboldened that I would put down the controller and draw maps of levels I wanted to play. I still have one, a rocky landscape I inventively called Mountain Land. This is where I trace back the urge to create games. Throughout elementary school I would create pen and paper levels that my friends and I would play through. Although pen and paper are excellent game creation tools, to me they were unwelcome necessities, merely blueprints for a time that I would make video games. This is me. I'm about 15 years old and I've spent more than 80% of my life enamored by video games. I spend most of my free time either playing games or doing things to desperately try to make them, whether it was being lost in the newly released Game Maker, shoehorning ideas into a pirated copy of RPG Maker, trying to learn code by making crappy websites, or making Mega Man inspired pixel art on school issued laptops. I was fumbling around with no clear direction, making video games with some kind of wizardry that felt completely out of reach. This is me. I'm about 26 and I've experienced a failed attempt at art school, a failed attempt at a career, a failed relationship, and the crappy technical college I was attending had just canceled their game design degree. I was at my wits end. This fake college was my only hope and it had failed me spectacularly. I nearly gave up on life itself. But then it was clear. I couldn't rely on a person or an institution to teach me how to make video games. I had to get out of my negative headspace, dispel the idea that I was too dumb to understand programming, and find some way to make games. I went to the internet. I found a list of game engines and frameworks. I looked at what people were making with them. One framework stood out to me, Flixel. Flixel games looked cool. I was going to learn Flixel. The next day I went to the bookstore and I bought the ActionScript 3.0 cookbook. I followed every Flixel tutorial I could find, I read every thread in the Flixel forums, I looked at source code for every Flixel game I could find. In a couple of weeks I was making my own games using Flixel. I had spent over two decades yearning for this power. Two decades spent idolizing the wizards that can make pixels move. Suddenly I was one of them, my wildest dreams had come true. Looking for source code to Flixel games led me to discover another rank of wizards. Some mad fools were spending weekends making games from scratch like frenzied gods on Mount Olympus hurling lightning bolts down to earth. There was a fire in my belly and I thought that maybe someday, ages from now, I would be able to partake in one of these crazed rituals. Months later, Ludum Dare 22 came and went. And watching from afar, I felt left out. I felt like there would be so much fun to be had trying to make a game on a weekend. And even if I would never be able to do it, I was doing myself a disservice by not trying. <coughs> Ludum Dare 23. I cleaned my desk of everything but the bare essentials. PC, keyboard, mouse, a hot and ready pizza. I spend the next 48 hours pouring myself into a silly pixel art platformer, just like the ones I had played 25 years ago. I live the dream, I conquer all my demons, I climb the tallest mountain on my horizon, I place 155 overall. Suddenly the mountain I'm on feels like a pitcher's mound. The top 10 games are all so wonderful. These developers are the chiefs of the craft, unshakable wizards who exist in another universe. I think to myself, maybe in a decade or two, possibly three, I'll be able to place in the top 10 and etch my name into history alongside these immortals. Ludum Dare 30. I live and die by game jams. Games are in my blood and I spit them out like a well-oiled machine. We started a collective who assemble every Ludum Dare and party by lurching over laptops for two days straight and then eating pizza and playing newborn games into the night. 
I make a goofy Pong like with spaceships. It places six overall. Finally, I had made it. So many of my idols occupy this sacred space. It never even crossed my mind that someday in the distant future, I'd make a game that would place first overall. Ludum Dare 32. I made an extremely dumb pillow fighting game based off an indie game I hadn't even played. It ranks number one overall. I reached the zenith of enlightenment and ascend to the highest throne of game development. I mean, it was cool, but looking back, my greatest achievement was believing in myself enough to do the thing I was meant to do, to stop doubting and underselling myself and just honestly and thoroughly pursue the dream I'd had for decades. That is what changed my life. Since then, I met and married a wonderful woman. I started a career making games at an awesome company and most recently had two awesome twin boys. I'm not saying it's all because of Ludum Dare, but it's at least due in part to the audacious provocation of the idea of making your dream come true on a weekend. Now, as a wizened veteran of dozens and dozens of game jams, I'm left to wonder, in some alternate universe thousands of years from now, will I ever be asked to make a Ludum Dare keynote? Hi, I'm Will, also known as 01010111. Now that you know my life story, let's focus on you. You're about to partake in one of these crazy magical rituals, and I have some advice. Get your tools in order. Make sure that your development environment is working, and don't update everything the second the jam starts. Also, if you have the time and energy, try a dry run. Don't be afraid to add some chaos into the mix. Try using a new tool, whether it's some new software for making pixel art, or a new instrument to make music with, or even a new engine or framework. Stepping outside your comfort zone is a surefire way to get creative juices flowing. Make a plan. Block out your weekend so you know when you should be working on getting your core mechanics in, when you should be fleshing out assets, or when you should be polishing things up in preparation of submitting your final build. Don't forget to give yourself plenty of time to fix bugs and playtest. Throw all plans out the window. Do all the art first. It'll make your first attempt at a prototype look great, and it'll give you a solid vision to work towards. If plan A isn't shaping up the way you'd like, scrap everything and start again. On the subject of planning, take the scope of your game, cut it in half, and then cut it in half again. What you think might be a reasonable scope can sometimes be 10 times the amount of work you'd think it'd be. Then again, maybe you'd have more fun with more scope. Try taking one element of your game, whether it's the art or expression and movement or text animations, and blow the scope out the water. The sky's the limit and players will definitely remember your game. Stick to what you're good at. If you've always been good at making low-poly shmups, try to think of a way to fit the theme around that. There's no shame in sticking to your strengths, and your game will come out wonderfully if you have experience making games like it. Actually, I think it's important to always try something new. Maybe you've been meaning to implement pathfinding in your favorite framework, or maybe it's time to try your hand at a new genre. Use all the time you have to jam. You've only got 48 or 72 hours, so you need to use it wisely. Try to avoid taking loads of breaks or getting distracted by the real world. Get plenty of sleep, take walks, eat meals with family, watch a movie. When you work and avoid, your creativity dies. Jams can be a whole lot of fun, and my games always come out more fun when I'm having fun making them. After you've wrapped everything up, take a moment to relax. Maybe take several moments, and by moments I mean days. It's a joy to push yourself during a jam, but it's easy to fall into a slump afterwards. Treat yourself right afterwards. Get some good food, take a long shower, enjoy sharing your new game with friends, and make sure to do all the following. 
Play lots of video games. People from around the world with various life experiences, totally different cultures, different skill levels, and wildly distinct ideas have just made thousands of totally new, totally free games. There's bound to be treasures that you'll adore playing. Do those folks a favor and rate their games as well. Leave a friendly comment to show them your appreciation for giving you this game. Reach out and make new friends. It can be easy to tell people what you think of their game, but it can be so rewarding to take that discussion to Twitter or Discord or wherever and create some new relationships. Most importantly, don't get too caught up in the competition. It was totally foolish of me to wait 20 years to pursue game development, but it was equally as foolish to worry about placing in the top 10 without celebrating the much bigger milestone of making video games in the first place. It's awesome to have goals, but keep them in perspective. If you make a game this weekend, you're already a wizard. Congrats! Okay. That's it for me. Uh, if it seems like some of my advice was conflicting, it's because game development is an incredibly squishy practice. Instead of lamenting how fuzzy and wiggly and uncertain it can be, celebrate it. If a certain aspect of it resonates with you, run with it and see what you find. Good luck and have fun. If you want to show me your game next weekend, please do so. You want more. You want to know what it takes to win. You want to know all the dirty little secrets that you can employ to take home number one. I know them all. Sound. If your game doesn't have music and sound effects for every interaction happening on screen, you messed up. Good sound in a game gives it an incredible amount of depth that you sometimes don't appreciate until you're playing a game without it. Design for designers. My best received games are local multiplayer. I don't imagine most of the people who played and ranked them played with a friend, and I don't think that the amazing AIs I added last minute charmed anybody. I think that the players being game designers themselves were able to extrapolate out the fun they'd be having playing with a partner. Presentation. If your game's up on itch.io, Give the game page some love. Pick out good screenshots, spruce up the logo, treat it like you're going to be selling the game. Also, put a nice title screen in the game. The more you do to make players feel like they're playing a premium game, the more impressed they'll be that you made it in a couple of days. Beyond that, just do your best. <laughs>